All right, welcome back to The Visionary Way. If you are tuning in for the first time, really excited to have you here. This is a series that I've created in honor of the situation, we will call it, because I don't think Facebook and Instagram like when you say the word of what's actually going on. Hi, Nazik. So we'll just wait for a couple people to jump in. Today, I'm, I'm chatting all about how to create an unforgettable virtual experience because in the time we are living in, the situation, which I'm not able to say, but you can all figure out, um, in this time, a lot of you are going to be forced to bring your business online and I want to help you through that challenge because for some of you it is just that it's a challenge it's something you've never done before and it can be a scary territory to enter right if you have not taught a lot of virtual classes if you haven't spent a lot of time doing this interaction via Facebook and on Instagram live um, you haven't hosted webinars you haven't created an offer that is virtual, then this feels scary. And I want you to know that I am here for you. And I want to support you through this because I get that it is trying times for everybody. But through this crisis, I really do believe there's so much chance for us to evolve and to adapt. And I'm really here to guide you through this in any way possible. Okay. So again, today's topic is going to be all about how you can create that unforgettable virtual experience, because I really do believe there is a massive possibility of replicating the in-person experience that you might provide and bringing it online. It's so possible and that's why I'm showing up here for you today. So we're gonna call this particular video how to not suck at hosting online events and classes, okay? How, let's, let's try that title again. How not to suck at hosting online classes and events. Now, this video is perfect for you if you are new to hosting online virtual events, if you have hosted many of them but you still feel like you're not as confident as you'd like to be, or perhaps you have never hosted anything online and your business was primarily a physical in-person business and now you're forced to bring it online, this is gonna help you, okay? So what's going on in the world right now is leading most people to need to adapt and evolve. And with this evolution of the world going digital, I want you to be part of the transition. I want you to make the most of what is going on. I don't want you to retreat and contract and just assume that there's no place for you right now because there is. And all you need to do is innovate your offer. You need to figure out, okay, based on what I do and what I provide, how can I change that, evolve it, tweak it, and provide something totally different that still maintains the core foundational vision of what I used to do. And what you used to do was two to three weeks ago, right? But that no longer works. We are all of a sudden in a different time. We've kind of accelerated, just like any business needs to evolve their offer year over year, you need to evolve your offer based on where you were two weeks ago. Because what people needed to buy two weeks ago is not what they need to buy today. People were buying based on want two weeks ago. Now they're buying based on need. So if you're doing business the same way you were two weeks ago, you are missing out completely and you're missing the point of what marketing is. Marketing is meeting people where they're at with a message that sticks. And again, where your audience was at two weeks ago is different from where they're at now. Now they need online offers more than anything. So if you're just joining, that's why I'm teaching a class all about how to not suck at online classes. I'm gonna type that in here. 
or I keep saying it wrong, how not to suck at online classes. Hey Megan, hey Nizik, I think I said hey to you already. And then I'm gonna try to pin that comment. Let's see, all these features, right? Pin comment, great. So I'll pin that there. So again, you're here because you wanna know how to create an unforgettable, unsurpassable experience online. Everybody's doing it online right now and most people are doing it really averagely, mediocrely, <laughs> if that's even a word. Um, they're not putting a lot of thought, a lot of care into it. And if you are the one to bring an experience online, it might have to be something new that you create. If you can bring an experience online and make it memorable, you are going to have mass massive success over the next week. I know it. I'm very, very, I firmly believe that those who show up in the virtual space right now and do it really well with intention and with care are going to thrive through this chaotic time. So if you want your piece of the pie in this virtual world, you need to start teaching rock star online experiences. I'll say experience, but I mean workshops, classes, um, social media videos, webinars, conversations, classes. Again, anything that you can do to share your brand online is going to be um, kind of the bulk of what I chat about today. So for those who may not have ever met me before, my name is Kelsey Rydell. I've been a virtual and online business owner for about four years now, and I got into this space because Number one, I had been let go from two of my dream jobs in my 20s and I thought, screw it, I'm gonna go build my own business. So I started a social media consulting business, which is online. Um, and in that time too, I also started to dabble in building my own personal brand and realized that in order to get beyond the boundaries of the city I live in, which is Toronto, I needed to bring my business online. And so in that time frame of the last four years, I've hosted hundreds of webinars and Instagram lives and Facebook uh, lives. And I teach at a private college in Canada called the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition. And uh, we just had our very first six and a half hour online class together. Um, that was on Sunday. I usually go up to the campuses and teach it, but again, that privilege has been taken away. So instead of saying, well, I don't want to be a teacher anymore if I can't go deliver the experience that I thought I had signed up for, I said, sure, I'll rise to the challenge and adapt. I'll teach an awesome six and a half hour class. And I did. And last night, you may have seen, I taught a fitness class virtually. I normally teach spin, spin class once a week, downtown Toronto. Um, I've done it for the last 15 years and uh, I've never done a virtual class before. So I came up with a high intensity interval training class and I taught it via Zoom last night. What an experience, right? Um, and so I, I feel like I want to share what I have learned and the tips that have worked for me because you're probably all gonna be bringing something online. If you haven't already, you will be in the next month or so. So that's what I wanna talk about today. Um, okay, so number one, let's just go through top five tips for hosting an unforgettable online experience. Five tips for not sucking at hosting an online experience. So. Number one, manage people's expectations, okay? So right now, people are assuming that your virtual option is the second best to the option that you provided before. So maybe you previously guided people through food tours in Toronto, and now you're saying, oh, actually, I'm going to do a tasting tour where we all meet virtually and I ship all the, the foods to your door and we do the tasting online together. People assume that your virtual food tour is second best to your regular food tour around Toronto. And here's the thing, you're already setting yourself up for failure if that's how you've teed up your online offer. Like, in light of current events, 
were not able to host our, you know, our physical experience anymore. Okay, so so I'm getting the backup experience now. Already they come into it thinking it's going to be like a half-ass effort. So here's my suggestion. Email everybody in advance. So number one, make your marketing materials like this is the new offer. It is exactly everything I've always wanted to share with you. Um, but number two, manage people's expectations. So send them an email before the experience and let them know how excited you are, how fun it's going to be, what they can expect in your time together, and just make sure you're giving them a little bit of an agenda of how the experience is gonna go so that they get excited and maybe include a personal note from you that says, you know, this is not our backup offer. This is just the same as the physical experience. So don't think for a second that it's devalued or that this is kind of our fallback plan. So I hope you kind of understood the concept of that because um, if you're teeing up your virtual offer as if it's a backup plan, people's expectations are already lower and they're not as excited because they think that, oh, well, in light of her not being able to use this, she's launched this crappy backup. Don't do that. So that's number one. Number two, when you get to rock your online experiences, to not suck at online uh, moments with your potential customers, make sure you are saying people's names. Get on the live video and be like, hey, Aaron, hey, Jose, hey, Laura, hey, Megan, hey, Kara. Like, you can go on, okay? Have dialogue with people. Make sure you're making it as personal as possible. Don't just be like, hey, everyone, and then get on with your content. There are real people on the other side of the screen. So treat them like a real human being. Ask them about their day. Ask them how they're navigating this challenging time. Show them your dog. As you can see, mine is right behind me here. Um, do things that make the experience really personalized. So number one, manage their expectations. Number two, make it personalized and say people's names and engage in conversation. Um, if you do have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to um, answer anything on the live video. Number three is to have a theme. Okay, so this one is not applicable to everybody, but I mentioned that I hosted my first six and a half hour online class. Um, and that happened on Sunday with my CSNN students. So I decided like to make this fun, why don't we make it a theme day? And so I told them all to wear comfy pajama pants that had patterns on them on the bottom and then wear a nice shirt on the top. So we all showed up to the video and you know, your theme doesn't have to be like this, but I knew we'd be sitting for six and a half hours. So everybody had on fun pajama pants and then everyone had on like a normal top. So we all kind of got up at one point and showed each other our pants and it just united the group in a way um, as soon as we got started. So I had emailed them in advance and I said, Hey, like looking forward to hanging out with you all on Sunday. It's going to be the best day ever. I've got some fun things planned. Um, no, one of those things that I've planned is actually a theme day and we're all going to be wearing, oops, <laughs> we're all going to be wearing, um, plaid pants. Dave, can you turn that off? So, um, so yeah, that's one fun suggestion that I have for you. Sorry, just got a little distracted there. <laughs> um, okay, let's go into the fourth suggestion. So number four, fourth tip for how to not suck at a virtual class or an online experience would be to have some time at the end or during the middle of your sessions for group conversation. Don't feel like this has to be a one-way experience the entire time. So for example, in my class on Sunday, I had what I called these hallway moments, because normally when we're in school together, 
we pass each other in the hallways and the students get to catch up on what they're eating for lunch and what they did on the weekend. But in this case, like we're all on Zoom, some people are on mute. So every hour or so I would pause and I would have a picture of a hallway and I would ask someone to share what's on your mind. Do you have a question? Tell us a joke, share a funny meme. Because these are the things that you kind of lose when you're not physically in the same room together. So I wanted to recreate that for our online classroom. So I'd put up the photo on my PowerPoint presentation of a hallway and I would just say, time for a hallway moment. Who has something fun to share, something positive, uplifting, a challenge they're going through, tell us what you're eating for lunch. And then we would all jam on that and people would be in the chat box, they'd be talking. And honestly, it was a lot of fun. It broke up the day in the best possible way so that it wasn't me just talking at them for six and a half hours. Because I don't think that's what people need in an online class. They want to feel connected connected to the community and to their peers. So that would be my fourth suggestion. Um, and the fifth suggestion that I do have for an online experience is to use the chat to your advantage. So like I told you all at the beginning, comment if you have any questions. If you're on Zoom, make sure you introduce people to the chat box and immediately get them to pop in and share their name, where they're from, um, their favorite workout that they did this week, or share you know, their word of the week, whatever it is, get them familiar with that chat box because that is a whole other element that people love in the online world in addition to watching the live content. So this is particularly applicable on Zoom um, and I wanna see you all use it because it's great. The whole time that I was teaching my class at CSNN, I noticed that there was a chat dialogue going on. Kind of the same way that like people aren't always just wanting to tune into one thing. We are multifaceted human beings. Sometimes you have a thought and you want to share it or an article or you're, you're thinking of the, the other person who's in this class with you and you want to share something. So it was really cool to see a dialogue going and they could at least feel that there was an outlet when they had something to say or they would type in question and I would say, oh, okay, Chris, you have a question. Let's bring you off mute. So it's just these little nuances of teaching an online class that you might not be familiar with. So does anybody have any questions in terms of how not to suck at hosting a virtual experience? how to create that unsurpassable online classroom um, or that online community. If you do, please leave them below the video, whether you're on Facebook or Instagram. And uh, yeah, this is the series called The Visionary Way. I'm gonna be jumping on every day at 11 a.m. Eastern to share some sort of tip or trick so that you can navigate this challenging time in your most visionary way. So that is all for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I will be back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern and I hope to see you back inside um, and I will chat with you all soon. Okay, bye.